Hey there guys, Paul here from TheEngineeringMindset.com. In this video, we're going to be looking at liquid level switches in industrial refrigeration systems to understand how they work and where we use them. It's time to make the switch to electronic liquid level switches. The LLS 4000 liquid level switch from Danfoss makes commissioning and installation much easier, and its SIL2 rating guarantees reliability. Plus, you can commission and monitor the switch using Danfoss's new smartphone app. Check it out using the link in the video description down below. So in our first video on industrial refrigeration engineering, we looked at the main system components for single stage, two stage, as well as cascade systems. If you haven't watched that video already, then you can find links to that in the video description down below. In each of these systems, we saw a number of vessels which accumulate and release refrigerant to maintain the stable operation of the system. In these vessels, we have a mixture of liquid refrigerant as well as vapor refrigerant. The liquid level rises and falls during the operation of the system and the cooling demand experienced by the system. Now we don't want the liquid level to get too high or too low in the vessels. We need to maintain the level between our defined upper and lower limits in order for the system to operate smoothly. If we don't maintain this, then we're going to run into all sorts of problems. Now the vessels and pipes are made of metal, so we can't visually see inside them. We can install sight glasses and also liquid level gauges, but these will require constant manual readings. We need an accurate and autonomous way to sense if and when the liquid level is at the limits and automatically alarm the engineers to the issue. So for that we use digital liquid level switches which look something like this. At the end of the unit we have a sensor. We'll look at how this part works in detail a little later in this video. But this part is going to be in contact with the refrigerant. Then we have a thread which will allow us to connect the device into the system and seal it in place. There is a hexagon head just above that which we will use to tighten the device into the fitting on our system. Then we have a heat sink. This is just going to dissipate the unwanted heat from the electronics. We want to remove this heat to ensure the electrical components last a long time and don't overheat. These fins just increase the surface area and allow us to dissipate more heat into the ambient air. Connected to this we have the electronic circuit board which has its protective casing on. And on the top of that we have the electrical connection which allows us to power the device as well as communicate electronically between the system controller and the device. Let's say for example we have this pump separator vessel in our ammonia refrigeration system. We want to ensure the liquid level of ammonia refrigerant stays between the upper and the lower limits. Mounted to the side of the vessel, we have a column. We will probably find a sight glass built into this, and we might even have a liquid level gauge mounted to the column also. Both of these simply allow us to visually inspect the liquid level of refrigerant inside the vessel. On the column, we have two threaded connectors, which our liquid level switch will be screwed into. These are positioned between the upper and the lower limits of our vessel for the liquid level we want to maintain. So, as we can see, the bottom level switch is submerged in liquid refrigerant, while the top switch is within our vapor refrigerant region. That's what we want, because it means the liquid level is within our desired limits, so the system is in normal operation. The device is detecting the difference between liquid and gas, so when installing the device, we would need to pay attention to the potential for gas pockets. For example, if we install the device in a horizontal position, then as the liquid level rises and falls, any gas pockets will naturally dissipate. But if we install the device vertically, then there is a potential for gas to become trapped within the enclosure. This is going to obviously affect the reading of the sensor, and we won't get accurate results. We have previously covered purging ammonia refrigeration systems also. Links for that can be found in the video description down below. Coming back to the column installation, we could face the problem that the liquid level drops. In this case, the liquid level is going to come below a lower limit switch. The sensor will detect that phase change from a liquid to a vapor and will send a warning signal to the system controller. Additionally, we could face the issue of overfill, where the liquid becomes too high in the vessel. This means the liquid refrigerant will rise above the upper sensor. The sensor will also detect there has been a phase change from vapor to liquid and will again send a warning signal to the system controller. In either case, the switch activates an inbuilt relay which is used to sound an alarm and can be connected to the system PLC or programmable logic controller. The device uses a technology known as reflectometry, 
which emits a microwave at various frequencies from the sensor and into the fluid. These rebound back to the sensor with a pattern. Each fluid and the different states of the fluid create a different pattern. The pattern is the resonance frequency of the fluid and each material has a different resonant frequency, so we therefore get different patterns. Liquid has a much lower frequency compared to gas, so we have these different plots. The resonant frequency is the frequency that causes the atoms of the material to vibrate. So, looking at a very simplified example, the sensor emits a microwave at a certain frequency over some atoms, which are bound together. This frequency has no effect on the atoms, and they do not vibrate. But as we vary the frequency through the spectrum, we find a frequency that causes the atoms to vibrate. As we continue through the frequency spectrum, the vibration stops. So by measuring these vibrations of atoms across the frequency spectrum, we can plot this pattern. A number of different refrigerants are tested and the results recorded by the manufacturer into the device. So once we configure the device and we specify which refrigerant our system is using, the device can correlate its measurements with the known properties and thus we have our digital liquid level switch. This can then be used to detect a liquid or vapor and relay an alarm if the system goes into fault. Okay guys, that's it for this video, but to continue your learning, then check out one of the videos on screen now and I'll catch you there for the next lesson. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, as well as theengineeringmindset.com.